second phase of peace talks between the government and the rebels of Riyak Machar, who call themselves as PLMA in opposition, commenced in Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa on February 11, 2014. The opening of the talks was officiated by Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Salenk. In attendance were ambassadors from all regions of the world, from USA to Europe to China and African countries. Present at the opening ceremony were also church leaders. <laughs> The government's chief negotiator, Honorable Nial Deng Nial, reiterated government's commitment to find a lasting solution to the political crisis in the country. Honorable Nial said the government delegation is for the talk with an open mind to find a middle ground with the rebels for the sake of peace in South Sudan. He, however, accused the rebels for violating the cessation of hostility agreement signed on 23rd January 2014. He said the rebel command on its own was unable to control its forces and urged IGAD to form a joint technical committee such that the implementation of the signed agreement is monitored. The most notable thing in the opening ceremony of the second phase of the peace talks is perhaps the presence of the Ethiopian Prime Minister. For the Ethiopian leader to find time out of his busy schedule and attend the occasion shows how important not only the region but the entire Africa loves the young country and how they want peace to prevail in South Sudan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, First and foremost, I would like, on behalf of IGAD, the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, and of myself, to welcome you all to Addis Ababa on the occasion of the launch of the second phase of negotiations between the two sides in the conflict in South Sudan. As you all well know, our regional organization, IGAD, has been making frantic efforts to resolve the crisis in South Sudan since the flare-up of violence that was in base transformed into a fully-fledged civil war, pitting brothers and comrades among each other. With all too real degeneration of the violence into all, an all-out tribal conflict looming in the horizon, it was only fitting and appropriate that our regional body stepped up to the plate before things spiral today totally out of control. Efforts were made both at the level of leaders and foreign ministers to find speedy resolution to the conflict. But equally importantly, the special envoys who were appointed following the resolution of the 23rd Extraordinary Summit of IGAD Heads of State and Government held in Nairobi, Kenya, on the 27th of December last year, in order to bring the partners, the parties to the conflict into the negotiating table, had been exerting maximum effort to discharge the responsibilities they were entrusted with. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to talk at length about the details of this arduous process as all of you here have been in the thick of it for quite some time now. Suffice it to say that after weeks of challenging efforts and shuttling back and forth, the invoice have managed to get the two parties to sign an agreement on the cessation of hostilities and on the question of detainees. <clears throat> well, this is a very important step in its own right, the more daunting part of the negotiation process is yet ahead of us, and the launch of the second phase today will certainly go a long way in getting us where we ought to be in the pursuit of lasting peace and stability. At this juncture, it's only appropriate that we all remind ourselves once again that it is time for more, not less effort, not only to bring the conflict into an immediate and but also to restore confidence and trust 
among the parties and the stakeholders in South Sudan by bringing about a politically sound and viable platform. That's why your meeting today is going to be extremely vital for the overall success of the peace process. You owe it to your people to remain committed to the speedy resolution of this senseless violence that has already claimed the lives of thousands of innocent civilians, most of which. But in the meantime, it is an absolute imperative that both parties respect and expeditiously implement the cessation of hostilities agreement. That both parties respect and expeditiously implement the cessation of hostilities agreement signed on the 23rd January 2014, as well as provide all necessary support to ensure the operationalization of the monitoring and verification mechanism as soon as possible. IGAD and its member countries, as well as the regional and international partners, will continue to try and bring our pressure to bear on the parties to urgently address the critical humanitarian crisis, provide protection and assistance, and explore durable solutions to the predicament of refugees and internally displaced persons in full collaboration and coordination with local and international humanitarian organizations. Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, in order for this to happen, both parties should not only follow through the launch of this second phase in earnest, but more importantly, to do so with a strong resolve and commitment. It is my understanding that our special envoys have or are in the process of developing a framework for this phase of negotiations including special, specific modalities on structure, representation, and time frame, so as to ensure the dialogue is truly inclusive. As both sides to the conflict have repeatedly said, the most fundamental issue at the heart of the conflict is of political nature that could only be resolved through civilized dialogue based on the principle of give and take and all inclusivity. It is my hope and expectation that the peace process will be designed in such a way that a broad range of South Sudanese stakeholders from government, political parties, and civil society actors are brought on the board and in a manner that gives due respect to the transitional constitutional arrangement already in place in South Sudan. It is also imperative that we take extra steps to fully address issues that could become source of some concern, whether real or imagined, in good faith. While looking forward to welcoming the recently released detainees to join in the negotiations soon, we should nonetheless quickly embark on the second phase with an open heart and mutual trust. Neither party should, however, use side issues as an excuse to prevaricate on the negotiation process, which could wreak havoc to the overall process. It is my well-considered view that you should not unwittingly allow your hard-won independence to wither away and your beloved country to become a hotbed of yet another regional proxy conflict with no end in sight. As leaders of a movement that gave birth to the young nation, you are expected to transcend the petty squabbles and the spar of the moment, decisions that so often stand in the way of success. Leadership, after all, is about making choices. However, I'm honored to address you all at this important occasion on the opening of the second round of political talks between South Sudan parties. On behalf of the United Nations, allow me to commend the parties on the signing of the 23 uh, January Agreement, as well as their commitment to now engage in substantive talks towards addressing the root causes of the current crisis in South Sudan. I would like to congratulate the IGA mediation on the progress achieved thus far, notably their ability to bring
bring the two parties to the table and their assistance to the parties to sign a succession facilities agreement and their relentless efforts over the past weeks to gather support from EGA member states and other key partners and stakeholders, including South Sudanese civil society, ahead of the second round of talks. As the South Sudanese parties enter the second phase of their talks, it both behooves us to remind them of the continuing suffering of the South Sudanese people as a result of the still continuing conflict. I cannot stress enough the critical importance of the full implementation of the 23 January Agreement, which are critical not only to mitigate the suffering of the civilian population, but also to create a conducive atmosphere for the success of the political talks that the parties are about to embark, to embark upon to address comprehensively the causes of the conflict. It is essential that all steps be taken to facilitate the work of the Secession of Hostilities Monitoring Mechanism established. It is our firm belief that the ongoing crisis can only be resolved sustainably through an inclusive process which... With the peace talk officially opening here in Addis Ababa on Tuesday 11th February, there is hope that a solution to the political crisis in the country will be found. The official spokesperson for the government's negotiation team, Honorable Michael Markway, says the agenda for the talks are not yet out, but reiterated government's commitment to the peace process. The, the envoys have not yet given us the, the, the agenda. All that was done was the opening speeches. And uh, after this opening session, then uh, the, the, the envoys may prepare an agenda and distribute it to us. So up to now, there is nothing we can say, but only inform the people of South Sudan that the, 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 the talks are about to start. We have already started with the opening session, and we will now, from now onwards, we will continue to negotiate as the agenda comes.